I'm going to preach about what Apostle Paul is teaching us in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 to 13. This is basically, Apostle Paul here, he is basically talking to us, the church, mga kapatid. And we as the church, a corporate church, or as an individual believer, we must know this teaching of Apostle Paul. Paul in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 13. So the title of this sermon is One Spirit for the Common Good. So from the title alone, we can see that God's intention is that we will be one in spirit. We are being gifted by one spirit. All of our gifts come from one spirit. We may have different gifts individually, but God's plan is there is unity in variety. One may be gifted of singing, or playing the guitar, or prophesying, or preaching. But all of those gifts come from one spirit. And we will see here why God gifted us with different gifts. What are the reasons God gave us these particular gifts? So one spirit for the common good. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 13. I'm going to read the passage. So those who are watching at home, I am encouraging you as well to open your Bibles and read with me. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 13. Verse 1. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in in everyone, it is the same God at work. Verse 7. This is where I'm going to focus my preaching this afternoon. Verse 7. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, by gifts of healing by, one, by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And He dis distributes them to each one as He determines. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Let us pray. Father, O God, we thank you once again for this great and wonderful and blessed Friday, O God that you have gifted us this time, this opportunity to come and worship you, O God. Thank you even for the opportunity and privilege to preach your word, O God. I pray that you will guide me. I humble myself behind the cross of your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray as well for all the listeners back home that you may open their spirit ears and eyes. And all of us, O God, will be filled in our spirits what you want to feed us today. We all do this for your glory and we allow your spirit to empower us this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what we have just read is somewhat a very important doctrine or teaching that a church must understand because first and foremost, church we cannot go forward as a church without the Spirit of God. If we will just do this thing, this church thing, by our own human effort, we better give this up and go home altogether. 
Because the Bible clearly says that we have to do this being empowered by allowing the Holy Spirit to manifest in all our doings here. This is not our works. This is supposedly the works of the Holy Spirit. We must understand very, that very clearly. And Apostle Paul mentioned, as what we have read in the passage, God has gifted us with so many gifts. So many. Prophesying, wisdom, faith. And some of those gifts are not mentioned there. Like Brother Jay here operating these multimedia equipments to enable this uh, live broadcast. That gifts, that particular gift, come from the Spirit. You may just be sitting there in your house or here in the villa, praying and interceding for every church activity. That is another gift. So let us go deeply to this passage and what really Apostle Paul wants us to understand about being gifted by one spirit for the good of all, for, for the profit of all. Now, as what I have said, I'm going to focus my sermon in verse 7 of 1 Corinthians 12. And it says, Now to each one the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. I'm going to expound my sermon from this one verse. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. From this short verse alone, mga kapatid, we can see a huge and very fundamental message, Christian message the Lord wants us to learn. Because giving glory to God, which means allowing his spirit to manifest and loving people which means seeking for the common good these two aims always go together what does this mean if you allow the spirit of god to manifest in the church you must love the church you must keep loving the people. You must keep loving the church. They must all go together. If you want to do good for people, you must allow God to manifest to them through you. In other words, because the world is also encouraging us, teaching us to do good unto others. But the difference is the world neglects God. Yes, the world is teaching us to do good unto others, but without God. I tell you, man always fail to do good without God. Because allowing the Spirit of God to manifest in you or in the church, you must do good to others. Examine ourselves. Let us examine ourselves, mga kapatid. Because if you are not doing good or loving others, from this verse, it means the Spirit of God is not manifesting in you. Do you get me? If you find it hard to love others who are seem to be unlovable, that it only means one thing. God, His Spirit is still not manifesting in us. It's not yet working in us. It's not yet showing in us. That is what we mean by manifestation. So remember once again, giving glory to God, which is allowing His Spirit to manifest, and loving people, they must always go together. That's why a church can never function by its own human effort. A church can never be loving to others without the Spirit of God manifesting in it. That's why it's a big challenge for us, mga kapatid, if we want others to see that the love of Christ is dwelling in this church, we must allow His Spirit, His will, to manifest within us. 
by nature, our flesh is not loving. Love can only manifest or dwell around if we allow the Spirit to move in the midst of us. You see how important it is to allow the Spirit to manifest in us. Amen? In the midst of us. Now, from this verse, verse 7, I'm gonna expound this verse through these four words or phrases. Number one, each one. Now, from the verse 7, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The question is, then, who are these each ones Apostle Paul is talking about? Who are these? Are you one of these each one? Whom the manifestation of the Spirit must be given? Have you ever asked yourself, did I really experience in my whole Christian life that God is manifesting, showing, representing His Spirit in me? And from this passage, mga kapatid, the great manifestation of the Spirit is when we show love to others. Yun kasi yung pinakamahirap eh. Especially to those who are not worthy to be loved in our own criteria of loving. But we all know that Christ is teaching us even to love our very own enemies. Now who are these each ones? These are people who live under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Who live na mumuhay under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. When we, see, when we say living under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, these are people who are practicing His Lordship, not just by mere words, but by practice, by actions, by thoughts. How do we know that these are the people who are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? From verse 3, second part of verse 3, which says, no one can say Jesus is Lord and really means it or really practice it except by the Holy Spirit, except when He is led or empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now, anybody can say Jesus is Lord. We have to be in the context, Matthew 7, 22-23. Christ, Christ the, our Lord says no, that in that day many will, will prophesy in His name. They will even cast out demons in his name. I'm just paraphrasing. And what did our Lord Jesus Christ uh, say? Depart from me. I do not know you. You doers of iniquity. So, what apostle says here when we confess that Jesus is Lord, these are people who practice in actions, in words, in feelings how to be led by the Spirit. Amen? So these are people with the manifestation of the Spirit, with the working, with the empowering, showing of the Holy Spirit. And these are people who are changed by the Holy Spirit, whose lives are changed by the Holy Spirit. Can you ask yourself now, are you being changed by the Spirit of God? Can you ever compare your life then and now before knowing God and after knowing God? Was there a significant change spiritually? Was there a drastic change or radical change with our view of life, of our priorities? This is what we mean by each one. These are people who allows the Spirit of God to manifest in their lives. Who depends, who, who rests upon the power of the Spirit. Are you still depending on your own human effort? On your own abilities? 
Are you not depending on the power or on the provision of the Holy Spirit in your life? Think about this, mga kapatid. Because the phrase, each one, Apostle Paul is telling us here, are all those people who depends, who allows the Holy Spirit to be sovereign, to be ruling in their lives. That is what we mean by people living under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, I strongly believe that all of us here, all of those listening out there at home, I believe that you are being led by the Spirit, that you are living and practicing your life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen? So you are one of these uh, people, Apostle Paul or the Bible, is talking about. The people with the manifestation of the Spirit, those who are changed by the Holy Spirit. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says also there, We all with unveiled face beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. Tayo daw mga kapatid, when we are living under the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ, from glory to glory, we are being, trans being transformed into the image of our Lord. And from glory to glory, we allow the Spirit to manifest in us. Apostle Paul describes it, it's like a mirror of the glory of the Lord. Yun bang, as a church, we are mirroring, we are showcasing, we are exhibiting the glory of the Lord through us. We are being transformed into that same image of our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom? By the Spirit. You cannot be transformed by your own knowledge, mga kapatid by your own research. Because the tendency of us human beings is, yes, we do want to be transformed, to be changed for the better. But, oftentimes, we do not allow the Spirit to do His working for that transformation. No? We just, sometimes, we depend on Mr. Google. Paano kaya to? Then, when you Google that, how to lose weight. Oh. <laughs> Daming mga suggestion. Or how to be encouraged again spiritually. You ask Mr. Google. Google. Then you see many ideas there. But I tell you mga kapatid, if we want to be transformed from glory to glory, it's all through the working of the Holy Spirit in us. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to work and manifest in our lives. So now I believe you are one of those people whom Apostle Paul is talking about, who is given with this manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, for the profit of all, para sa kabutihan ng lahat. Later on, we will see why God so instructed us or so gifted us with so many gifts and that is for the common good of all. No? Hindi for selfish good, but for the good of all. The second word which I'm going to expound from the passage is the Spirit. The same verse, verse 7, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. As what? I've said, there is only one spirit behind all of these varieties of gifts. What gifted Brother Jay to do his gift in this particular ministry is the same spirit which gifted him that gifted Pastor Glenn to be a pastor. Going back to verse 7, 8, and 9, it says, To one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. 
to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. And secondly, it's the Spirit who decides who has what. This is very important, mga kapatid. We must pray and ask God what is our gifting for us to be able to participate participate in the edification of the church, to, strength, to that strengthening of the church. Ang hirap kasi, many believers will not seek or ask God of what their gift is. Hindi naman siya gifted to being a preacher, but force himself to be a preacher. Have you ever asked yourself what is your gifting from the Lord? It's very clear that each one of us has different giftings according to the determination of the Spirit. In verse 11, it says, And He distributes them to each one just as He determines or just as He wills. Sabi saya pa, dili di ay ta magbuot-buot kung unsa atong gift. Are you with me, church? Because God so designed you for that particular gift, for you to be efficient or effectively participate in the edification or strengthening of the church. Kung hindi ka gifted in evangelizing and you are very good in some other gift but you really force yourself to evangelize others, you are not gifted as an evangelist. Don't force yourself but there must be one day in your life mga kapatid as a Christian na dapat alam mo na ang gift mo. As what we have read, Apostle Paul describes the church just like a human body. We have a hand, eyes, mouth. One body, many parts, different functions. Same as the church. Hindi pwede sabihin ng kamay na siya ay mas importante kaysa pa. All of body parts have their own important functions. That's why Apostle Paul is telling us here, there is actually unity in spite of varieties in gifts. Because all of those gifts are gifted from one spirit. The spirit is sovereign. He is the one who wills or who determines your gift. Ask yourself, brothers and sisters now, ask the Lord, ask His help. Allow the Spirit to reveal in you. Lord, how could I participate in the church through your gifts? I don't want to be working in the church to be ministering to others that I'm not sure of my particular gift. Try to ask yourself, mga kapatid, with the help of the Spirit. When I was a new Christian, I was then 18 years old. I was very young. I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ at very young age. Just a month or two, I then know what my gifting is. And it was confirmed by my youth pastor then. That Alan, you, you, you're going to be a preacher, a teacher of the Word of God. At first, I couldn't believe it. I just laughed at my pastor. But deep inside, I knew. But being afraid, maybe at the time when I was still so young, we must have the time in our life, mga kapatid, na alam mo that God has revealed to you what your gift is. No? Sa Bisaya, once again, huwag tayo magbuot-buot. 
It's the same thing in any organization. If you are an electrician in a company, you cannot act as the chemist in the laboratory. No? We have all different functions in every organization. Much more in the church, mga kapatid. In order for us to function as a body with Christ as our head, then we must function according to the particular giftings willed and determined by the Spirit upon our lives. So before I go on to the next point, please pray and ask God of what your gift is for you to be effective in the church. Amen? The third word which I'm going to expound from this verse is manifestation. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Now I was amazed when I tried to open the dictionary meaning of manifestation. And one of the meanings I've found there is that manifestation means the proof of the reality of something or someone. Although the common synonyms of manifestation is demonstration, presentation, exhibition, or showing. That is what we mean by manifestation. But one meaning which I'm really amazed me is that it's the proof of reality of something or someone. In other words, if you want to show a thing or a being or someone to be really true, to be real, you must be able to show it. That is what manifestation is. Therefore, in a church, we cannot show the proof that God is real if we don't allow the Spirit to manifest in our church. Are you with me? Uulitin ko. For a church to be able to prove that God is real, it must allow the Spirit of God to manifest, to work in it. We are not playing God or church here. It is the Holy Spirit who is empowering us so that the world will see that indeed God is real through His manifestation in the church. Not the showing, not the exhibition of human abilities. Kahit gaano pa namin kagaling ni Pastor Glenn mag-preach dito, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, we can never prove from this meaning of manifestation that God is real in the eyes of the world. Manifestation means demonstration, presentation, exhibition, showing. Just two days ago, we went to Dubai Expo. And so many countries had their pavilion. And one function of the pavilion is to manifest or demonstrate or exhibit their particular country, right? To showcase or to show to the people what their particular country is all about or something about. So the pavilion of the particular country in Dubai Expo when you go inside there, you will have a glimpse. For example, we went inside Argentina Pavilion. Now, when I went inside the Argentina Pavilion, one of the things that they showcased there is that Argentinian football player, Messi. They want to manifest through those video presentation what their country is all about. In other words, to manifest is to bring into light something or someone to be seen by people. Now we want 
do we want God to be seen by people in our church? Do we really desire God to be manifested, to be exhibited, to be presented or demonstrated in our church? Yes, we must. And that we can only succeed if we allow the Spirit to do His working, to do His manifestation. Because it's the Spirit who knows who God is. We may fail exhibiting who God is. Sometimes we fail. We misinterpret of who God is. But the Spirit will never fail to show, to exhibit who really God is. Ang hirap kasi, minsan, we try to show God to people in our own way. Kaya powerless, the world are not convinced. We have not shown the proof of the reality of God. Because we tried to exhibit, to demonstrate, to manifest God through our own ability. No? So church, we are being gifted, each one of us, by the manifestation of the Spirit. And let us allow that gift because it will showcase, it will exhibit God who is God in you? Amen? When you go inside the Dubai Expo Pavilion, you will just see of a glimpse of what that country is all about. But it's not all about that country. You will just see a glimpse of it. You may be gifted of playing the keyboards, just like Brother Mike. But if he allows the Spirit to manifest through his playing of the keyboard, the world will feel, will know who God is through the manifestation of the music that He created because He allowed the Spirit to empower Him to manifest in His music. In other words, pala mga kapatid, all that we must do in the church, even outside the church, it must be according to the will of the Spirit. Yes, indeed, it's very difficult to follow, but it's the truth. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The gifts and the ministries of believers in the church are manifestations of the Spirit. It's actually a showing, an exhibition of the Spirit. So if you suppress it, if you don't allow the Spirit to showcase or to show himself who he is after gifting you you are grieving him there are people i know who are really gifted but they somehow are ashamed to show into the light into the people of who the spirit is all works in the church should not be manifested by human efforts the work of the church is thoroughly supernatural. Kasi pag human effort lang, it's just an ordinary, worldly event, worldly thing. But something that comes or manifested by God, it must be supernatural. So mga kapatid, through that gift of the Spirit in you, allow Him to manifest. Because a glimpse of God through that gift that He has given you, people will see who God is. Sister Ja might be gifted of dancing for the glory of God. Through His dancing, her dancing, if she allows the Spirit to manifest through her dancing, the world will see this is what God is. Something about God, people will see through that gift. Are you with me? So, hindi pala tayo dito na basta lang. I want there. Gusto ko doon. We must function as one body. Varieties in function, but perfect as a whole. The last phrase or word is the common good. 
Why does God give us all these gifts? The Spirit is manifest for this purpose. Why does the Spirit want to manifest in us? The main purpose of God is for the common good. You see, our God is not a selfish God. He wants to manifest in you through that gift. Not for your good alone, but for the good of all. He gives gifts and ministries for two reasons. That is to manifest Himself and at the same time to help us do good to each other in the church. Yung gift mo pala, mga kapatid, is not given by you, by the Spirit. So that you can boast to your brethren or to your sister. Now you see, I'm more gifted than you. I'm holier than you. But God has so given you that gift for you to do good to other people, to your brothers and sisters in Christ. As what I've said, When we say manifestation of the Spirit and doing common good, they cannot be separated. These two must go all together. People will see that the Spirit is manifesting in you if they see that you are good to others, if they see that you are loving to others. And if we flip it all around also, do you want or you, do you desire to do good unto others? Then allow the Spirit to manifest in you. Because you can never succeed in doing good to others without the Spirit of God in you. Kasi our own spirit, the human soul, the human heart is wicked. Someday and sometime, you will get tired of doing good to others. But if you allow the Spirit of God to manifest in you, it will not be a burden for you to do good unto others. Hallelujah. I'm going to end this sermon by once again encouraging each one to determine to ask that particular gift the Spirit of God has given you. And then allow this gift to manifest in you through the Spirit. And desire to do good unto others through this gift. Always put in your heart that you have this gift so that you can benefit others. Not for your own glory, not for your own good alone. But God has so gifted you to show love unto others. Hallelujah. I hope mga kapatid, we have somehow received a message from the Lord today. Because we can never march forward as a church if we don't allow the Spirit to manifest in our church. Most importantly, in our very own lives. Mahirap. Mahirap mag magpakunwaring Christiano. But if we allow the Spirit to do His working, it will not be a burden to live a Christian life. That's why many believers fail and get stumbled along the way. Kasi they are all so drained with all their abilities. They have that knowledge that doing good to others is God's will. But they don't allow the Spirit to manifest, to work in them. That's why napapagod na didrain along the way. Let us all pray. Father, O oh God, we thank you, Lord, that you are indeed a great and loving and gift-giving God. Thank you for the manifestation of the Spirit that you have given to each one of us, O oh God, that you have empowered us that you have shown that the Spirit, your Spirit, O oh God, is sovereign over, over our lives, O oh God, because 
for the good of all. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Indeed, forgive us, Lord, that many times in our Christian life, O God, we fail to manifest the working of the Spirit in our lives. We try to do the things according to our will, according to our abilities, O God. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, remind us always what, that by working through our own abilities, for sure we will fail, O God. Lord, allow your Spirit to empower us, to work in us, so that we will be able to show into the world who really God is. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word this afternoon. We bless you. We honor you. And we give you the rest of the time today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And everyone will say, Amen.